everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to talk about a buzzword which is deep seek so I'm sure most of you have heard this whether in respect to like with respect to a good model or it could be like you are criticizing it doesn't matter at all because there are a lot many humors there are a lot many good news around this model but being a developer it is always a uh, a good thing to try out the things which are like happening in the market and that's the reason I am here with this particular video in which I will show you how can you use DeepSeek model along with the Azure AI search with your own uh, documents uh, to get the answers of your questions so there are like like I said a lot many criticism is going on but keeping that aside one thing to understand here is uh, DeepSeek model is not a general conversational model this model is meant for like the questions or the scenarios which are very complex or which requires a high level of reasoning kind of thing and this is the reason I am saying avoid using this model for general conversation like hi how are you what can I do this what can I do with this so these things are not meant for this particular model because one thing here is this model is going to think a lot and then will provide you the response so it means the uh, latency you can see over here the response time is like a little bit ha on higher side and that's the reason I am saying don't spend time on playing with this model if you have very small conversational kind of thing and let me reiterate this model is very much suited for the task which requires deep understanding so with that let's go ahead and try out this on Azure AI Foundry and the reason uh, why I'm using Azure AI Foundry is because whenever we are using our own data we are very much like we need to be cautious like where our data is going to be stored and all these things so in order to get rid of all these headaches, headaches what we can do is uh, we can use Azure subscription because whenever we are using Azure subscription we are sure that our data is tied to Azure itself so it is not going outside the boundary of the Azure so we can go ahead and try this out in a very very private and the seamless way so in order to get started very first thing we need to do is we need to go to Azure portal and I'm going to create a new resource group so that things will not mix up and I will name it as so the reason why I'm doing this uh, from scratch is I have received a lot many comments that people are not really very sure from where I'm getting the key, how I created this resource, how I'm indexing the data. So that's the reason these days I'm creating videos like from start till end. So except the UI part, I'm going to show you every single thing which you need to perform. So let's give it some name. I would say East because I'm planning for East US then let's go click on create and you can see the resource group is created now we have the resource group and we are going to utilize this particular resource group to push in everything so nothing is going to sit outside it so once this demo is done or once the application is not uh, required then we can go ahead and simply delete this resource group rather than deleting individual resources well so now go back to the Azure portal here on the front page and search for Azure AI Foundry because this is the place where uh, this model is available and we can go ahead and use it so click on create and here like I said in earlier videos you can use any of these options so I'm going with the hub because eventually it is going to create a hub even if you are going with the project uh, select the resource group which we just selected and make sure to select the correct region and here I'm going to name it as Azure AI Hub and this is the one it is creating for OpenAI services so I will go with this one because I have not yet deployed any OpenAI Azure OpenAI services uh, let's give it few seconds and it should be ready for us so now here it is going to create three to four resources which includes like the storage account, key vault, cognitive services and one of the resource for the machine learning so this step would take close to a minute so I would pause my video and will come back once it is done so here you can see deployment is complete let's go to this and click on launch Azure AI Foundry so it will 
go ahead and open up the new web page for us. Okay, so right now we have not created any project. We have just created the for hub. So I will go ahead and create a new project. So click on create uh, the new project button and just say, just give it some name and click on create. Now again, this step is going to take a little bit of time. So you can see here the project got created. We got the key. We got the connection string. Don't worry about all these credentials because like I said, I'm going to completely wipe off this particular resource group. So it's okay to share these keys. So yeah, so I was saying here is the key. This is the project connection string, subscription ID and all these things. Next thing is we need to go ahead and check for our model, which we are looking for. So click on models plus endpoints. And here you can click on deploy model, select deploy base model. And here you can search for deep seek and it should appear over here. So, okay, so this is the one deep seek R1. And here you can read the instruction about what it is and what are the user's recommendation. Like it is saying it is good for mathematical problem, mathematical problems and the coding the scientific reasoning and all these things so accordingly you can see if this model is a perfect fit for you i'm going to click on confirm and here you can provide the name of this model so i would say and click on deploy so here you can see it is still creating. It is in provisioning state as you can see on the left hand side over here. So I will give it few seconds. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a resource for our Azure AI search because we need to push in some document inside Azure AI search so that we can vectorize it and then we can query the same document. So for that, I'm going back to my Azure portal I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to storage accounts. So this is the one which got created along with our hub. So I'm going to use the same one. And in this one, I'm going to create a container which will hold the document for us. So just name it something, data store, click on create. And in this one, I need to upload the document. So let me quickly grab my document. So copy as path. So this is just like a very small document I have taken for demo purpose. And it is like the handbook which talks about Contoso Electronics. And this document, I have grabbed it from Azure portal itself, the GitHub repo. So now we have this document ready. Let's go back to your portal and search for AI search. So now I'm going to create an instance of Azure AI search. Select the resource group and here we need to give unique name to the search instance. Pricing tier you can select. I'm going with the free one. And click on review plus create. Click on create and it will go ahead and create this particular search instance. Okay, it is in progress. Let me quickly go and see if it is done. So here you can see the provisioning state is succeeded for our new model. It means we can go to playground and if you want, you can try it out, but I'm not going to do it. But of course you can see it is listed over here. So it means that you can start typing and start working on it. Okay, so let me go to the search. Okay, search instance is deployed. Next thing is we need to add our data. So there are multiple options. You can choose any of these. So, but the one which I'm choosing is import data. And here you have uh, like the data sources from where do you want to select. So in our case, I just uploaded inside this blob storage. So I will select that one. Then we need to provide the data source name. So let's provide some name. And here you need to select the connection string, the connection string for your blob storage. So if you have existing one, you can select that and select this one and click on select. 
otherwise you can also go ahead and create new one and then upload your data over there so click on next skip and here if you want you can do these required changes whichever field you want if you want to remove anything if you want to change the key and all those so let me quickly rename this index name so this is my index name click ahead uh, click so that it will go ahead and create an index for us so I'm going with the same name that's pretty okay with me and click on validating so now you can see it is done nothing is running here okay so go ahead and just make sure that it is actually there so this is the index which we just created and here you can see 50 MB so if I want to just give a try if data is actually uploaded or not because sometimes it takes like one to two minute so let's see now we have something it means this is the data which uh, this is the data which is pulled from our indexed part okay so it means indexing is done everything is done next thing is we need to write just few lines of code to utilize all these services and for that i have already written this code so make sure that before executing this code you are in uh, you have azure ai inference installed and azure search installed so these are let me quickly point you so these are the two things azure search documents and azure ai inference these are the two things which i have installed and once these are installed next thing is we need to import the required packages so this one chat completion client i'm using to make a call to the llm and in this case it is deep car one then this is to maintain the user messages uh, user and the system messages next is for the search client because we want to interact with azure ai search and the last one is for credential so we can pass in our keys using this particular class so let me quickly execute this cell okay Moving on to the next cell, first of all, I'm creating an instance for a completion or the chat client. So it takes three param, it takes more parameter, but uh, I'm going with the bare minimum one. So endpoint is the chat endpoint. Credential is using Azure credential, and then here you need to pass in the key, and then the max token. So I will pause the video and will furnish all these details but let me quickly walk you through the code first so we have created the chat client next is we need to go ahead and create the search client so for search client also we need to have endpoint index name and the credential so make sure to pass in the admin key over here and before moving ahead i will quickly replace these things give me a minute and i will pause this video and will come back so i have replaced my keys uh, and I will quickly so I'm putting here temporary but you can push in either to the environment variable you can keep it outside you can move into the key vault whatever you want and I will execute these cells quickly okay next thing is we I have written a function to retrieve the context because now a document is sitting inside uh, Azure AI search and we want to grab the related text or the relevant text for, to create the context for us so for that what we are doing i'm utilizing the search client which we just created above and calling it search function so in this search function we will pass in the query provided by the user and here we need to provide how many top results we want so i'm just saying get me three and select would be the content because content is the field uh, which got created while indexing the data and then i'm returning entire text as a context so let me execute this cell as well and the last thing is to generate the responses. So for generating the responses, definitely we need some input data. So in our case, input data is nothing but the context which we, uh, which we just retrieve from the retrieve context function. So we will be passing here query and retrieve context will give you the relevant text from the Azure AI search. And this is the prompt. So what is the simplest prompt we can give us? Use the following context to answer the question. So context is the one which is coming from Azure AI search. And the query is the question and the query is nothing but the user provided query and answer which will be generated soon. Okay, so once we have this, then we are constructing the 
messages so messages will have system and the user message of course you can omit the system message as well if you want and it will still work so once this is done it will execute this particular api which is the completion endpoint and will return the response so i believe we are good it's time to go ahead and execute this particular question so the question here is who provides electronic components for aircraft so this is the query which user is providing and then we are passing this query to the generate response so let's see how and what we get so like i said it is like this model is meant for critical reasoning so of course it's going to take time before generating any responses so we need to be a little bit patient let's see and here you you can see that the response is pretty big and the first thing of the response is the thing it means it will tell you what actually it is thinking or how it is compiling the data to get the required answer so what it is saying okay let's see the user is asking who provides electronic components for aircraft okay so this is the one which is uh, taken by the model and it is thinking about so first now all these things are in terms of the model because model is thinking so that's the reason it is saying i so first i need to look back at the context given the main company mentioned here is contoso electronics the context says there are a leader in the aerospace industry and provide advanced electronic components for both commercial and military aircraft their specialization in creating cutting edge systems that are reliable and efficient so the answer should be contoso electronics i need to make sure there is no other entity mentioned here so you I hope you are looking and watching that how it is thinking so although it is arrived to the conclusion that okay contest electronics is the could be the answer but still it is double checking it to make sure that actually it is the answer so it is saying i need to make sure that there are there is no other entity mentioned here let us scan the context again yeah it's all about contoso they mentioned their mission team and the commitment but no other providers are named so definitely contoso is the answer the user might want a straightforward answer but i should rephrase it exactly as in the context the answer should start with contoso electronics provides that dot 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 and here ends the thinking now starts the final answer so final answer is contoso electronics provides advanced electronic components for both commercial and military aircraft so you can see that our question was this and how nicely it has rephrased the answer according to our question rather than telling the whole long story so i hope you got an idea how we can utilize this model and how much time it is taking to respond to your queries so make sure that you are going with like a long document or quite complex question rather than the simple straightforward question like what is the color of the sky so do let me know in comments how you are utilizing it and by any chance if you are not able to use as your subscription then do let me know i will try to come up with another approach using some free or open source model thanks for watching